Unbound Ann E. Berg, um, starting on page 258. Uncle Jim's still searching the cave for critters when old George Cooper comes back carrying Aunt Tempe's basket. Our belly's been filling with nuts and berries so long the smell of big house food makes my stomach jump. Still warm and no maggots, old George Cooper says. Tempe must have just left it. Before we finish devouring our ham and Johnny cakes, he pulls out a flat gray rock what's got scratches in it. Two wavy lines like a ruffle on Anna's collar. That's water, he explains. Aunt Tempe's telling us that it's safe to leave. He looks at me. Good, we took the chance. Uncle Jim pushes our food away. Tonight's the night. He and Mama jump up and bundle the boys in the extra shirts. Aunt Sarah gives them a spoonful of quiet. I rewrap our dinner. That spoonful of quiet, kids, that really reminds me of how in Number of the Stars they had to give um, that baby that medicine to keep him sleeping. So it's the same thing, that if the kids need to stay quiet to help them stay safe. I rewrap our dinner. Now there's no room in our bellies for food. Now we is all of us stuffed with fear. Old George Cooper reviews the rules that he's been spouting every night. No matter what you see slithering behind you, no matter what you feel creeping up your leg or crawling along your neck, no matter what you hear buzzing in your ears, keep quiet, keep moving. I'll be leading, so follow close. I see any snakes or gators, I'll give them a wide berth. You do the same. They won't bother you if you give them space. Old George Cooper talks slow and low and serious. You's going to gag on the stink and feel like fainting from fear. But you got to keep quiet and keep moving. Them what makes it to freedom's braver than snakes and gators and biting flies. He nods real solemn. There's nothing in the swamp that's worse than the stink of being a slave. Old George Cooper lifts little Willie up into his arms, and Uncle Jim reaches for Aunt Sarah. You take Thomas, Aunt Sarah says. I'm staying here. She looks at old George Cooper. That's if you'll let me stay. Aunt Sarah's shoulders is narrow and bent, but she puts her but she sets her back strong as Uncle Jim's. I don't eat much, and I can keep out the snakes and other critters what comes in while you's out. I can protect runaways that stop and hide here too. They'll be lonesome and afraid, and I can give them a kind word and encourage them to keep going. Old George Cooper nods. Be pleased to have the help. Beside, the roads ahead's difficult and dangerous, and you safer here. So Aunt Sarah's going to stay behind. Wow, that's a surprise. Everyone agrees that Aunt, Sher Aunt Sarah should stay, even Mama. It's your choice, Aunt Sarah, she says, her voice steady and soft. It's your choice. Mama, I thought you said we stay together. I turned to Aunt Sarah. Do you want to stay with us? Don't you want to stay with us? Don't you want to keep going to freedom? Aunt Sarah brushes my face with her twisted bony hand. My sweet child, she says, I done found my freedom. Don't you hear your mama talking? It's my choice. She looks at mama and then again at me. In all my years, I never had my own choice. Aunt Sarah and mama hold each other a long time. There's no words, mama finally whispers. Aunt Sarah touches mama's face with her naughty hands. May the good Lord keep you, she says. Uncle Jim nods at Aunt Sarah, his solemn eyes telling her goodbye and promising her he'll take good care of us. He tugs Mama's shoulders. Come on, Catherine, he whispers. We need to go. It's my turn to say goodbye, and I wrap my arms tight around Aunt Sarah's waist to keep my sorrow from spilling out. Aunt Sarah reaches into her pockets, and she pulls out a tiny porcelain button, and she presses it into my hand. Remember me, Grace fight against them what thinks they own you any way that you can fight against them I will never forget you I whisper I put the button in my torn pocket and I tie mama's ribbon around Aunt Sarah's narrow wrist Aunt Sarah smiles tears soften the crust that's always stuck in the corner of her eyes let's go old George Cooper says he nods at the gun standing in the corner only if you have to Sarah Uncle Jim lifts Thomas into his arms. Silent, we file past Aunt Sarah. Blessings, she whispers, kissing her hand and touching each of us as we pass. Grief quivers inside of me like a butterfly what's dying in the grass. 
Outside, a silver shadowy moon flickers behind the clouds. A heavy mist wraps its dark arms around us. The air smells like pine and wet bark. Old George Cooper leads us, carrying Willie like a tobacco sack wrapped around his neck. Uncle Jim's next with Thomas, and then there's me, holding whatever's wrapped up supplies is left. A handful of berries, a slice of ham, some Johnny cake crumbs, and an almost dry bottle of blue sleep. Behind me, I hear Mama whispering, asking the good Lord to help carry her heavy heart. I pray too. I beg the good Lord to keep away the dogs and the patty rollers and snakes. I beg him to watch over Aunt Sarah and to guide us on our way to freedom. Seems Mama's prayers is soft silver threads leading straight to the stars, leading right to the place where the good Lord and his angels listen and keep watch. My prayers is like Aunt Sarah's button, too small and cracked to hold anything together but a broken heart. Good Lord don't care about fancy words, Mama said when she taught me how to pray. You just give him your thoughts, any which way you can. He'll listen and hold him safe. Tiny glimmers of moonlight shiver on the path like angel wings. And I know the good Lord's trying to send me slivers of hope. But my family's still in danger. And much as I try to leave it behind, a quivering shadow of sorrow and shame follows me. She needs to let go of that shame. It's not her fault, it's the mean slave owners. We move so quiet, it seems like we's all other creatures living in the woods. It seems like we's part of the woods, part of the darkness, what covers us. Part of a pure, unspoiled world. A different world than the one Master Allen and the Misses live in. Not a world with shiny silver and fancy dishes, what come all the way from England. Not a world of whips and lashes and angry words, but a different world. Even in darkness, with creaky night sounds that frighten me and trembling with fear of snakes that might be hiding in the grass, even with broken buttons and sad goodbyes, even with my quiver and shame, I feel part of another world, a beautiful world, a world what whispers freedom. We walk a long time. The only sound is soft and ghosty, tiny crackles neath our feet, Mama's silvery whispers, the flap of wings and dark branches and the tiny hoots and chitters of unseen creatures. I feel them all around me like the good Lord's angels watching over us and covering our tracks. Under my feet, the earth begins to soften. Cain's thick here, old George Cooper explains. We're going to have to crouch or crawl. You'll be fine if you keep moving. We all need to keep quiet and keep moving. They must be getting into the swamp. I feel the earth tugging at my feet. Giant stalks reaching to grab hold of me and wonder if evil spirits is already making ready to swallow my soul. Keep moving, Mama whispers. Keep moving, I repeat. Finally, we stand at the edge of a large pond of stinking water that must be full of snakes, flies, snapping turtles, and fearsome gators. Gotta keep moving, old George Cooper says. Daylight's coming fast. He heads into the water that reaches just below Willie's sagging body. I hold my breath and step into that warm, buggy, foul-smelling pond. Beside me, my gown billows like dirty clouds. Everywhere, mosquitoes buzz and bite. Under the water, something soft and slimy wraps around my bare legs. I hold my breath and just keep moving. We made a long, slow, and even step till without warning, old George Cooper changes direction. It feels like we're circling backward. Fear takes hold of me. Uncle Jim steps aside and nods for me to fill the watery gap. I turn round just enough to see him slip behind Mama. Don't be afraid, I hear him whisper. It's I and something else, and it won't bother us if we don't bother it. Bother who? The only sounds, the soft plop and splash of water, the snap and flick of bugs nipping at the darkness. There's nothing around me but my own fears, growing like mushrooms after a storm. And then I see what looks like a large log gliding next to us. We ended on page 277.